You, you know, you have to ask all the right questions. You have the factory preset in the processor for the speaker system. Yes, sir. No, sir. You, you know, because all those answers, the, the, the questions that I ask, are, okay, have you done any time alignment whatsoever on, you know, left hang, right hang, shubs, front fill, outfills, 270s, delays, you know, all those answers to those questions are going to immediately allow me to delegate my time as to how much effort I have to put into a, addressing things uh, immediately, you know. And that again comes with experience. I know in certain situations when I walk in and push up pink noise, I know I'm going to have a great day. And other days when I push that pink noise up, I have to get out my laser, make some measurements, do some tweaking, spend the time, listen, walk around and make sure everything's zoned out correctly. and. You know, even the few seconds I took to walk down and listen to the front fills, I made a level adjustment, I made an EQ adjustment quickly. Right. But it was, you know, ballpark that I know it's yeah. not, you know, but still, that ability to be able to go and listen, mentally form that picture in your head by hearing. And again, that hearing part ties back to everything that we do. Yes. And if you can listen and you can hear to a music or an instrument, you can mix it. If you want to. But that's if you, exactly if you right. say I want to work, then by golly, if you if you're in a town where your local company does a lot of country music, boy, I'd be listening to some country music because you know what? When you go out to that bar, down, that band down at the bar, and quite frankly, I still work in bars when I'm off and not touring because I, I like to work. Yeah, right. <laughs> and it keeps my chops up, and it's fun making crappy little house rigs sound way better than they actually are if you got a good band to work with. Right, you know? and, and having somebody come and go, "What did you do?" Different? But that's great experience. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Go mix. Listen to what a pedal steel sounds like because mm -hmm. it's different from an electric guitar or a slide or a dobro or a banjo, you know, nitty gritty dirt band. I, I mixed them for a year, a, few, a couple of years back, and uh, oh my gosh, what, a what an absolutely incredible, because they're actually a mix of a lot of different things. Mm -hmm. They're a mix of bluegrass, country, rock and roll, folk, right. because they've got drums, bass, electric guitar, piano, fiddle, mandolin, acoustic guitars, uh, electric guitar. But they still have a dobro too, don't they? Uh, no, no, no okay. dobro, okay. no dobro player. But here you've got uh, the whole gamut right. of things, and you've also got the whole gamut of people who come to see the band. So you have to be, as a mixer again, you can't have a rock and roll kick drum pounding seats in the front row, and you can't be running at 102 dB. No. You know? It's all relative, and again, there's the experience thing, how to read an audience as well. Even if you're working with an act that's, let's say, a heavier act, regardless of what the music is volume-wise, if you're going to do a corporate gig and you see a whole bunch of 150 white 10-round tables, um, you can pretty much assure if you come out of the gate at 105 that people are going to get up and leave. So when you do your sound check, you just you will balance accordingly, and it's going to make the client happy. It's going to make your act look great, and it's going to make you look fantastic. Right. Adaptability.